There we go. Um, so I don't know, do we want to, if you're not, anybody that's not talking, want to maybe mute? I think we're getting a lot of background noise. <laughs> All right. Um, you should be good. If I think now I, I have everything's recorded now, Ken. Okay. All right. So we'll call the order. So we have uh, a quorum. Okay. We have some citizens online. Do you guys have a presentation? Yes, I know uh, the Tri Town Trail has a presentation. Do we want to have them present under citizens' comments, or they're also it's an agenda item? Do we want to have them present there? Oh, okay, then let's, let's keep it that way. Then. Uh, let's move on then. Citizens' comments, and we'll go to uh, information items. Yes, I'm having a really hard time hearing. It's picking up a lot of background noise. Do you have the ability to mute everyone? Uh, I might. I know that the newer version of WebEx, the, the host can move people. All right. All right, is that better? All right. Uh, all right, where are we? Informational items? And so I kind of covered on my director's report, but I did have Heining Pennis come out, um, and I did get some quotes on um, the work for our capital project. Um, so I'll just attach those here. There's one for the basketball courts, which I mean the tennis courts, which I'm thinking we should do this year as we have the extra money, the seven thousand to do the pickleball lines plus the crack throwing. Um, just under seven thousand. Um, and um, so we could do that this year, and then he gave one a separate one for the basketball courts that we could wait and do in July. Um, the basketball court, you know, it's not going to be a huge deal if we wait on that. I think the tennis court is more important um, that, you know, the crack that's forming across the serve line. It's hollow and then, um, but then you know, I have it on the director's report too, but I just attached the quotes. Um, that way we can share, secure it and then actually have them start the work first thing in the spring be one of the first uh, groups on their schedule. Well, Scott, in their write up, they indicate that uh, this may just be a problem again soon. That yes. the water is going to be cool and because the bottoms aren't fixed or underneath is not fixed. Yes, yeah, so I met the guy out there and he called to clarify actually after because he didn't, he was uh, thinking it was a different type of court surfacing originally when we were out there. Um, because originally what he was saying is they would actually take a strip out, like cut the strip out, fill the underlying surface, and then replace it. But he said because it's uh, the way that that court set up, there's actually like a mesh membrane. So what they do is like they pour like a two-part epoxy into it, and then it seals and hardens that way. Um, and he said it's, it's a common problem. He actually said it's a pretty simple fix. It's not, you know, and the epoxy will make it so you don't have that hollow you know, feel and sound to it. It'll actually harden it right up. Um, but that way you're not cutting through the mesh of the membrane. Um, so like he basically said, there's one that looks, looks like it's starting to form that we'll probably want to fix later down the line. But it's not, what he said, it's not letting water through, which is, so it's not an issue yet. And um, you can kind of just see where the seam's starting to form there. Um, so like, you know, down the line with our next, you know, set of fixes that would be one that would get addressed too. so you don't want to do it until it becomes gets to a certain point because otherwise you get like patchwork look on the court um they do touch it up with paint and stuff after but um it was good to walk out and him show like what to do and what to wait on until it forms a little bit you know more so you're not you know filling it now and then it becomes still becoming an issue I mean, basically explains to me as if it's going to hold the water out, it's fine for the time being. But once it gets to the point that the water goes through, you definitely want to seal it up because that's when it gets in and expands. 
and we start to get you know bigger issues. Okay. Any uh, any questions from anyone? All right. Can I get a motion to approve uh, October thirteenth? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. All in favor. All right, director support. All right, let me go through real quick. Got a lot on the agenda and a lot on the director's report. Um, so we're getting all the fields ready. The irrigation lines load out and winterize for you know for the winter so they don't freeze over. Um, as you guys know, on October 27th, they unveiled the Don Greasy Sports Complex sign. Um, Judge Colonel, we've had vines that are growing along the double doors. Um, and when I was actually out there with the plumber, um, getting estimates for the work for the water line, we noticed they're actually going up the siding and underneath it, and it was popping some of the siding out. So I talked to Paul, he's going to cut all those down so that now that it's, you know, not green and luscious, you can actually get to it a little easier. Um, we have no more permits at Erickson, so Russell's um, going to take the canopy down. He has a volunteer right now, so it's the perfect time. Well, he's not blowing across the river, but they trying to do it by himself. Um, Christy Hill, we're getting some quotes to fix the backstop. Um, as one of the storms dropped a tree on it. Luckily, it uh, didn't damage the poles, the base poles, so hopefully it won't be too expensive. Um, as they're just going to be replacing the mesh. Um, lake areas at Highlands Lake are removed, and then um, also we've uh, pumped out and removed the uh, mobile restroom and brought it back to the Board of Ed building for storage for the winter. Uh, baseball just finished their fall season. Actually, they just added one more game, I think, for this weekend for softball, but it's not you know, part of the official season. Um, I met with the Ledger Youth Basketball League, um, reviewed all the guidelines that were at the time. Uh, they actually decided to postpone the start of the season until after winter break to get a, let the high school start and basically gauge what goes on with the high school and see how they're doing things, learn from their mistakes. Um, also see how the, you know, the cold and flu season progresses with the COVID on in addition to it. Um, and actually we did just receive more guidelines. They updated everything uh, like two days ago. And we don't even have the sector guidelines yet um, specific. They're still working on those. Um, the governor did get on and no high risk sports for the remainder of 2020. Um, so that includes wrestling. Basketball is actually, they have it as a moderate sport. So technically they could run, but they've changed a lot of things like requiring masks at all times now when before you were allowed to take the mask off while you played. Now it's no matter what mask, um, no taking it off during, during the game. Um, we just had, uh, held a second candy bar bingo tonight. Uh, first one was a huge success. We actually had 35 cars. Uh, we decided to keep it a little smaller. Uh, we limited it to 22 because that's the number of parking spots on the front strip of the senior center. Um, and we filled, I think, pretty much every spot tonight as well. Um, it was a huge success. We actually they didn't want to leave. We played an extra game or two. Um, we might even try and do it now a third time because we still have some candy left. And, I, I can't do it all myself. Um, we tried a scarecrow contest with actually, we only had six participants, but uh, it generated a lot of interest on Facebook. So we're going to try it again next year. Um, you know, hopefully it'll grow. It's something simple and easy that we could do. Um, and then, you know, have people vote on Facebook for the winner. Um, if, you know, nine COVID, we might do it where you put them on display at Trunk or Treat. Uh, or, you know, one of our fall events in person when we actually do return to normal. Um, as most of you probably know, we rolled, the governor rolled back to phase 2.1 as of November 6th. Um, so this has an effect on a lot of things. It set a cap of 25 people for us indoors and 50 people for outdoor gatherings. Now no longer 100. Um, and then, as I mentioned, no high risk sports until 2021. And then actually any indoor sports are required for a mask and waiting on the more specific guidelines. EPH gave us uh, some 
guidance today as well. Um, so we're getting ready for all those winter activities now as things are spiking as well. Uh, the events magazine um, is being prepared. Actually, we have had, I think, info in for next week. Um, that'll be mailed out December 14th to uh, all the residents of Ledger and Gales Ferry. Um, I got building permits approved for the replacement of the fences. Or actually, Russell called me freaking out because he thought someone was stealing small fences the other day. Um, I forgot to tell him they were doing that work. Um, so they actually started that. And then also I got the building and zoning permits that we need to install the new Parks and Rec sign that we found for out front here um, that has Parks and Rec and Senior Center, so we'll be a little more visible up in the road. Um, and then we also I got quotes for dog labeling signs. Um, and I'm working with some other you know groups and different commissions to get signage because we can get with a high number of signs, we'll actually get a good deal from uh, the company. So we're all working together to order them, and it'll be consistent messaging for all the town properties. Um, and they're, I'm taking care of that, and then everybody's going to put in their, their share for however many signs they need. Um, the water line, I have submitted the check, the applications. Um, Doug stopped by today. They're ordering all the supplies necessary, and then um, the official scheduling date will be within probably the next two to three weeks. Uh, that will actually start and be underway. As soon as his foreman has, you know, the date all the supplies will be in, that'll be scheduled and started. Uh, coordinated with the school, we're going to um, try and do it, I believe, on a, start on a Wednesday and then finish up on a Thursday because we'll be the least disruptive for the school as they're, they're remote on Wednesdays. Um, and then we already talked that I met with Hinding, um, looked at the courts to you know fill the cracks. They also included pickleball lines, and I did talk to him about uh, net anchors as well. And I believe they're just because I asked him it wasn't on the quote. He said I think that they're just going to do it for us uh, without you know putting it as a charge. I guess it's a real simple thing. They I think we're supposed to do it, and they just might have forgot when they you know put the nets back in. They didn't drill the post for it. Um, I think that's it for the director's report. In a nutshell, nice and quick. Okay, anybody have any uh, questions? Comments? No, it's all good for me, Ken. All right. Can we get a motion to approve that? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Hi. Lost my thing. Here we go. All right. Financial reports, nothing, right? Nope. Um, I did receive an email from Marsha today that they have opened the next year's fiscal inputting. So that means budget season is about to start. Um, so we'll probably have more information going forward. We'll have to start thinking about that capital improvement and then in the next year's general fund budget as well. Okay. Any old business from anybody? Did we um did we skip the uh, approval of the last meeting minutes? And you're on mute. See, no, no, we did it. You can do it again if you like. I approve our, I put the motion to approve them, Loretta. Can you get a second? Yeah, I second it. All right, all in favor? Aye. You're muted. Got it. Thank you. I put it under the wrong item. Okay. Thanks. All right, new business. Right town trail. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to Keith. He has, a, I believe, a presentation. Let me see, Keith. Um, um, I can make you the center. Okay, I put a color up. Uh, this is a presentation that was done by Mr. Paul Reynolds, and I'll let Paul uh, uh, talk about. Uh, various pictures and Paul as you need I'll take and switch from 
screen to screen. Does any everybody see the uh, presentation? No, so Keith, at the bottom, there should be a little next to the bit where it says mute and video. There, I think there's a share button. Uh, I think I gave you permission now. I think you should be able to hit share and we'll be able to see your screen. All right, I'm sharing it now. You, do you see it? Um, no. No, I don't see it yet. Uh, well, it's uh, up on my screen, and I've, I'll hit share again, share content. There's the, the, the units. Now, it's, when you do it, you should have like a bunch of screens pop up to click um, share again once that shared. I, okay, goes. I have those screens. There you go. Now, okay. See your screen. There you are, Paul. This is a presentation that Paul presented at our annual meeting in September. You want to describe the screens there, Paul? I think you're on mute, B. I just see a desktop. I don't actually see a presentation. You don't see the presentation? No, I just oh, see your desktop. You. I see, yeah, lots of desktop icons. Okay. Do you see it now? There you go. That's the one. All right. Paul, I'll take and do the screens as you like. B, you're muted. Okay. Uh, this is the start of the trail when you look at it from Preston Plains Park. Um, it, it sort of is a, a gateway to the entry as you're viewing it from Preston Park. And next, Keith. Uh, these are some of the some of the people that uh, started the Tritown Trail. Uh, nothing has been done. We are just in an op op open field and it's a joyful picture. Next. Uh, this is actually Chad Frost who helped us plan the trail and he is actually guiding us to the uh, starting of the trail where we're going to be walking at, on the start of the trail. Okay, uh, this is the actual field and it's uh, going to go down to Joe, Joe Clark Brook. Uh, as yeah. Next. Uh, these are the poll pollinators that you would view when we started out on the project and it's just beautiful open field and um, there's just natural beauty in the plants that are there. This is part of the meadow as you're going to approach the wood, woodland air area of the trail going going down towards Joe Clark Brook. And these are the po pollinators in the field. Uh, this is actually a very beautiful photo. It shows the beauty of the trail, the start of the trail. And this is the woodlands leading to Joe, Joe Clark Brook. It's beautiful. Uh, this is the woodlands around Joe, Joe, Joe Clark Brook. This is actually Joe Joe Clark Brook. It's a beautiful brook. 
it's flowing, it has uh, its natural beauty. Uh, this is another view of Joe Clark Brook. Uh, this is a crossing across Joe Clark Brook, which would get you further into the trail. Uh, the, if you if you linger on the bridge, if you linger on this crossing across Joe Clark Brook, rather than just jumping across it, if you stand on Joe Clark Brook and look up and down, that's 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 another view of the of the brook. Uh, this is walking through the woodlands area, the typical view. Uh, this is a beautiful portion of the trail. At a, uh, at a certain point point of the year, you are seeing a lot of a lot of ferns, and it just shows some of the natural beauty of the trail of the woodland trail. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. Next. So th this is. This is some boulders that are along the trail. It's uh, typical of the ledger or <laughs> Connecticut air area. Next. Uh, this is when you're on the southern portion towards the uh, barn of Joe, Joe, Joe Clark Brook, another view of its natural beauty. We actually put a bench up in this area, so it's a nice place to bring a picnic lunch. There's a total of uh, four benches now installed along the trail that Paul's just taken us through. Uh, this is uh, Connecticut stone stone walls, just more of a portion, more natural beauty as you're walking walking through the trail. Uh, this is the end of the woodland portion of the trail, and it goes into an open ledger field. And uh, sort of, uh, you're coming out of the wo woodlands. This is a view of coming out of the woodlands and looking at what ledger has in their open open fields. Uh, these are some of the people that were involved in working on the trail, and, and we owe them a lot of a lot of thanks. And um, they they had they had worked hard. Next, okay. And this is the final view. It's a, a beautiful view, a typical of the woodlands. We would like you to come experience the pastoral. Uh, take take only memories, leave only foot footprints. The main objective of the of the PowerPoint is to say that you have a gem, you have beauty, you have natural beauty. Thank you, Paul. Your turn, B. Okay, so uh, I believe I'm unmuted. Is that correct? Yeah, you're unmuted. Okay, thanks. So, Tritown Trails is pleased to be here tonight. So, we are here in front of the Ledger Park and Rec Creation um, Commission in order to request that we come under your jurisdiction. And my name is B. Reynolds. I am a board member of Tritown Trails. I'm a resident of Groton. We have on our board two residents of Groton and one resident of Preston, and the rest of us are from Ledger. Um, I'm also on the Groton um, for a Trail Coordination Task Force, and I bring that up because I want to in, um, bring up to you that we are a Tritown Trail, and we are working on the Groton section as well. Um, I attend these meetings with Avalonia. Um, I guess I'm in uh, in canyons here. <laughs> I think, I'm not sure why I'm not back on, but anyway, 
Um, so uh, the Groton, uh, Groton Trails Coordination Task Force is a group of interested people in open spaces, and they include representatives from Tritown Trails, Avalonia, Groton Open Spaces, and under the direction of Groton Park and Rec, and that is Mark Berry, who is their director. Um, as a representative of Tritown Trails in Groton, I have been um, vocal and supportive of any progress we can make on the South End, and I'm happy to report that in Groton, they've applied for a community connectivity grant, and that grant is including some new bicycle trails in Groton, but of our interest is there's also looking to, uh, as part of the grant, to have a bicycle trail on Depot Road. And that is actually the connection from Bluff Point to Route 1 and would be the first leg of the Tritown Trail southern portion. So we're hoping that that grant comes through and that would be a big first step for Tritown Trail in Groton. So to give you a, just a, I have just about a five minute presentation about a brief history of Tritown Trails, where we are now, and a little information that might be helpful to you. So in 2010, the Tritown Trail Association master plan was approved by all three towns. That's Preston, Ledger, and Groton. And we ran two fundraisers in 2013 and raised over $14,000 and were very encouraged by the financial support that the community pro provided us. In 2015, the town of Ledger was awarded a grant from the Connecticut EEP which was a recreational trails grant. And we were awarded, the town of Ledger was uh, awarded $160,000. And that was to develop the first phase or the northern section of the Tritown Trail. That including actually setting up the trail, getting our wetlands um, permission, as well as other permits. And it also included engineering for two bridges, one over Jack Joe Clark, Brook on the northern section and another one for the Joe Clark Brook on the southern section. <laughs> also during the time we were able to procure two conservation easements. Two landowners in Ledger graciously have, uh, have provided us conservation easement on their property. And the reason why that was crucial is because it connected these two town properties. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with them, but one is an open field that's right across 117 from Preston Park. And the other one is Joe Clark Field, which is if you're on 117 and you see an old red barn, that's Joe Clark Field. And that's 100 acres. It's a much, much larger parcel that I was aware of. So it's quite a nice piece of property. Um, so the, the grant was completed in 2019. And also in that year, the Southeastern Connecticut Council of Governments also developed and agreed to, or, or, or I would say, I guess, <laughs> they developed a regional bicycle and pedestrian plan and Tritone Trails was in, included in that plan. So the Tritone Trail it has been in existence since 2008. Uh, so we have a long history, but we finally have opened the trail, which has been the exciting part of it. So in the summer of 2019, we bushwhacked, we did trailblazing, we did a temporary boardwalk so we could get across the northern section of um, the Joe Clark Brook. And in 2010, the temporary bridge was completed, uh, boardwalks were constructed, bushwhacking was completed on the town open spaces and conservation easements, the bridge was painted, with environmentally safe st uh, staying. There were switchbacks, signs were installed. And you know what? This fall in 2020, the Tritown Trail was opened. So it was since 2008 that some very dedicated Ledger residents have been working on this and kudos to them. So the Northern 1.2 miles of the Tritown Trail is open. It was through the effort of 40, over 40 different volunteers since April of 2020. And um, we presently are working on trailblazing also the southern part of Joe Clark Field, which would add another three quarters of a mile to the trail. And that section of Joe Clark Farm, which we didn't even have pictures of, is an, um, an interesting 
forest area. It has multiple foundations, old root cellars, wells, lots of stone walls, just beautiful old stone walls. And what we were amazed at, the number of over 100-year-old trees, majestic trees that are in that property. It's, uh, we're very excited to be opening and working on that next section of the trail. And to look at our coordination efforts with the state and various organizations, we're working with the Connecticut Forest and Park Association, and we will be putting a sign up Preston Park because Tritown Trail actually ties into the Blue Blaze Trail. We have worked with the Connecticut Census Trail Census Group and we're getting an infrared counter. So we'll be able to monitor the number of people who are using the trail. And we hope to have that information to help us with grant writing in the future. Uh, Hike Connecticut has also started a new website which will be released the summer of 2021 and we will be included on that site as well. And please check us out on Facebook, like everyone says, check us out on Facebook. <laughs> we have over 1,000 followers on Facebook, which I thought was pretty impressive. And whenever we post, we get at least 40 likes. And we did the community, the uh, Ledger Forum one time, and we got 76 likes. So there are a lot of people very interested in the trail. And volunteers are very supportive, so it's been a, a wonderful experience. And in the last two months, we've raised over uh, $2,000 in funds and uh, wooden supplies. So, um, so that, that's been wonderful. So there's hikers, runners. We're amazed by the number of families with young children that are out there. Uh, mountain bikers are using it. Um, and as we work on the trail, we're always running into someone, a family, a runner. Someone is using the trail. And there's multiple cars in the parking lot on weekends. So we have been gratified by the response of the community and the interest in the trail. So we're looking to the commission to have the, us under their jurisdiction. And what we hope for is that we would be able to help us with grant applications or uh, fundraising, uh, assist us as we may need future wetlands permits, um, as possibly um, building permits as well, because there are several rivulets we have to cross. Um, we're always open to ideas, and we look forward to, uh, to moving ahead. And as you can tell, we are a hardworking group of volunteers interested in trailblazing and improving the trail. So we're here to work. We need your help with some direction and some coordination through the various town commissions and agencies in Ledger. So if you have any questions at this time, please let me know. Um, my family and I walked the trail last weekend, and uh, we uh, loved it. We really had no idea what to expect, and it was a, really a nice, uh, a nice trail. Um, it's obvious a lot of work has gone into uh, into making it, and you know, the bridge was was top notch. It was uh, it was really nice, and there are a lot of like little switchbacks going through the woods that were very nice. Good. Um, you mentioned that uh, you have another three quarters of a mile planned from the uh, the end point right now. Um, right. When it's all said and done, how long um, will it go through Ledger? How how many miles will uh, will? Ledger well, as far as we have permission right now, we only have permission to the boundary lines of Joe Clark Farm. So if you look at that, that's almost two miles. So if it, it's a back and forth trail with a loop, it would be almost a four mile overall. If you started at the north end and went all the way down and did one of some of the switchbacks or lollipops down there and came back. Thank you. Um, I know the original plans had us going from Preston Park all the way down to Bluff Point. Um, right. And one of the hangups was the permissions along the uh, along the reservoir in Groton. Have right. we gotten past that? What our, pre our premise is is to start at the north end and the south end and make choices along the way. Some of the ideas that it's possibly doing spurs to other open spaces, a uh, possible spur over to Ledger Center. And we'll progress as things open up. We have several landowners we'll have to work with in the future as well, even before we get to Groton Utilities area. So we're just hopeful and we're just moving ahead, at, you know, one piece at a time. This will give us two miles down here. The Groton end will give us maybe a half a mile. So um, we're just active at both ends of the trail and see where we go from there. And we have alternative plans. If you look at the, the um, 
Facebook page, that map to the right, which is the overall trail, that will show you some of the alternative routes that we may have to use. So we have alternative plans, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say thanks too. I, I tried to go down there uh, last weekend. We made it part of the way, but then it started raining, so we turned back. So we never actually made it through the entire trail. But uh, looking forward to going through that full path. So now, is that fully accessible for biking? It the depends who you are. <laughs> yeah, it's, the, the area I was walking was different. That's that, not going to be paved at all. <laughs> no, it won't be paved at all. Right now, we're looking at having a four foot wide path. You know, okay. the multi use trail is certainly something we hope for in the future. But right now, we said we're starting with a hiking trail. And we have, and I met a, a mountain biker out there just this weekend. So it depends <laughs> how challenging a trail you want to be on. But um, our and our next big project is really to get across to Joe Clark Brook South, which is by the Red Barn. And we are actually meeting with Wetland Commission tonight to try to come up with some ideas of how to get that crossing in place. So we have a couple of ideas. We'll be presenting them. And once we get that, then you can have an easy access, either parking at the Red Barn or at the northern end. Uh, to do that. And anytime anyone is interested in walking the trail and getting to see some of the ruins, just give any of us a call. We'll be happy to take you out there. Just bring your boots. <laughs> I do have a, a question. Um, if we do become under your jurisdiction, how would you like us to communicate with you? Would you like us to have a board member attend your meetings to update? Uh, do you want to send someone to our board meetings? You might be something that we want to consider so that we make sure that if we are under your jurisdiction, we have good communication back and forth. I think that would be right. Oh, yeah. um, we'll have to figure that out as, as we... Uh, okay, just thought approach. I would bring it up. When do, when do you guys meet? We meet the first Wednesday at seven o'clock at the paddock up on Rose Hill. And then, yeah. And then actually we meet every Wednesday morning at eight o'clock, sometimes at the pavilion, um, but with COVID restrictions, we're, we're trying to figure that out for the winter. But, it, but we, the working committee meets every single week. And that's at seven? Yeah, seven at night, the first okay. Wednesday of the month. Okay. And you know what? I can put you, uh, maybe through Scott, I can put you on the mailing list so we can send a invitation to all of you if you'd like to attend any of our board meetings. That would be great. Add something to it if I could. Yeah. Go ahead, David. Oh, yes. Uh, well, uh, you, you know, I used to be on the town council, and I wanted to say that I was on the town council when the Clark Farm came into uh, the ownership of the town. And at that time, there were lots of ideas as to what the future of that property could be. As B said, it's uh, over 100 acres. And uh, some of the suggestions that had come forth are actually complementary to the idea of the trail, but would, would be more likely under uh, something like the Parks and Rec Commission. Uh, because the ideas for ball, ball fields are certainly uh, uh, compatible with the trail. And uh, ideas for community gardens are there's some very fertile soil there. There's a, uh, the equipment for the park course I noticed was stored there behind the Red Barn. Uh, those things could be reestablished as historic sites, as B was mentioning. There, we're proposing perhaps a covered bridge that would uh, accent the history and some historic exhibits there. Uh, we have the pollination field that we saw in the uh, in the video, and uh, some ideas for dog park or picnic areas, or perhaps a bandstand. Uh, there's uh, ideas have been suggested for a climbing wall or a zip line uh, or flower gardens. All sorts of ideas for art art paintings and sculptures and and uh, whatever. So I hope that a lot of ideas can be continued, uh, continue to be explored by this commission and by the town as a whole. Right now, of course, the uh, 
the property is under the jurisdiction of the town council. But I, uh, um, I presume that there will be some sort of a town-wide committee that will come up with a overall plan for the Clark Farm, uh, which the Triton tri will run through. <clears throat> That's it. Thanks, David. Anyone else have any comments or questions? Um, if we do um, acquire the Tritown Trail, um, would it cover all of the land currently and in the future? It's my understanding that's essentially being held under a town department where I believe Keith can correct me if I'm wrong, where the e things like that, um, cause it's been, uh, like the town, the town owned property that runs through the advantages and then the easements I think also go like in the town name. I, have to be, I don't, I could be wrong on that, but I think that's a kind of explain to me that it's a home under a town department. Scott, can you, can you mute? Cause I can't understand what you're saying cause there's too much feedback. Yeah, so folks that talk, uh, please mute. Better now? All right. Yeah, I believe my understanding, it looks like Keith's not sitting there right now. Um, the way it was kind of explained to me is they need a home under, you know, under a town department or a town, you know, organization, um, you know, for financials and things like that um, to be run essentially through us for fundraising. Because I think, you know, for grant purposes and then all the easements, if it's under Parks and Rec, um, that's, that's more capable to you know accomplish what they need to accomplish as a Tritown Trail. Um, there's some roadblocks, some things that they can accomplish, I think, as an association independently that they would be able to accomplish if they were under Parks and Rec. If I can just add to that is that we were an unusual association. Most associations that are, have uh, conservation focus tend to own their land. Mm -hmm. And we don't own anything. <laughs> we are the volunteers. We are the workforce. We are the ones who will do the clearing. We are the ones who will come up with the ideas of how to cross the brook. You know, we're the ones who will figure out where to blaze the trail. But we don't own anything, so we need a home. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's, basically what it is. Am I correct? It's the 5013 status, I believe, that you guys have doesn't allow you, but would allow us to own, you know, the properties and the easements necessary for the trail. Um, I think if they were to do that, they would have to change their nonprofit status. Um, and then also the mayor has already talked to the Conservation Commission because I wanted to make sure that, you know, we weren't stepping on their toes as well. Um, and they're, you know, as I was told, they're okay with us, you know, taking the Tritown Trail over. That was my question. Um, why come to Parks and Recs instead of going to the Conservation Commission? It just seems like the Conservation Commission, them being, the Tritown Trail being under them would to me make a little more sense. So I was just curious why that that's, and also financially, where does that put us, you know, for our budgeting and everything like, how is that going to affect? So I know the Tritown Trail does do a lot of, you know, their own fundraising. Um, and they said they would continue to fundraise and I uh, talked to Karen, she said they would you know, continue raising funds and doing a lot of work, getting volunteers together. Um, as far as why not the Conservation Commission, for this trail specifically, because they're trying to go across two towns into Groton, the other side is under the Groton Parks and Recreations jurisdiction. So as far as commu communication goes, it'd be uh, a little simpler because you know, I, deal, I deal with the Groton Parks and Rec Department all the time. Um, so it's going you know, to be a more consistent flow of communication that way as two park and rec departments working together with this on um, versus the Conservation Commission. Also, I think they have a lot on their plate getting, I think they just got another parcel in as well that they're trying to work on. Yeah. Okay, that makes that makes sense with that. And um, as, far, as far as the monetary piece, 
it's been clear that the town is not necessarily interested in sponsoring us monetarily. So we know that as far as any of our expenses, or whether that's equipment, bushwhacking, chainsaws, whatever, that comes under our jurisdiction. We're, we're just needing a home so that if we want to do a grant, we have to do it through the town. So Park and Rec would do that. Yeah. If we raise funds and we need a place to have those funds, we need to use the Park and Rec Commission to, to have a place to sort of park that money if we do get a grant. That, those are the things I foresee as what we need from the Park and Rec Commission. Um, will there be any um, like liability insurance that we'll need to get to cover the trail? And is there funds available for that? Um, so actually, as far as my understanding is, because it is town property that the majority of the trail is on, it's already a liability for the town. Like it's already being covered under the town's insurance because it's town property essentially that the trail is going through. And a number of years ago, okay. and a number of years ago, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with in West Hartford, there was someone who got hurt on the reservation, West Hartford Reservoir, and because of that, there's a new state statute. Instead, only if you intentionally have a place that would cause or you intend to cause harm are you liable. Other than that, public properties are not allowed to be sued. You come under a state a statute, and I can find that information for you. So I think that's why the town is also okay with opening up the trail, because there is a state statute that protects towns and public areas. Any other questions? Or Thank you for your consideration, by the way. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much for the presentations and uh, all the hard work. So, Scott, I, was this approved by the council? Then? So, just us just motioning to approve this? Yeah, I clarified with the mayor. He said simply, if we approve to take them in, that's it. Because I, I wanted to, you know, ask him that if we needed to then go to council for them to go, and he said, nope. It's simply, if we approve to take them in. They they would be put under under parks and recreation. I mean, our you know our direction that way, they have a, a home under a town department. Okay. My last question: um, Is this adding more? Is this going to add more to your caseload? Um, not really. It doesn't sound like it because they they are very independent. The yeah, they, town I love their presentation. presentation. Uh, it simply benefits them, like because the permits would go in under a, a town apartment versus an individual. Um, you know, it, it really doesn't sound like it's going to be a big burden for us. Um, so basically, is, is it because they don't have the five hundred one c three? They just have the five hundred one. Yeah, so they can't own essentially can't own oh, okay. property, and then for grant purposes, we can get yes. awarded the grants, but they they can't. Like they won't award a grant, you know, a lot of the grant money to, you know, that type of organization, but they will to the town or parks and rec. Okay. Because it's on, you know, it's on town property too, so. Okay. I, I think the, per, our, the uh, presentation was very lovely. Um, it is a very nice um, trail. So. All right, uh, Park and Rec Commission, do you have any other comments or concerns? Okay, can I get a motion to approve this? So moved. I'll second it. I'll second. All in favor? All right, welcome. Thank you. We Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. All right. Next, I believe I don't see Ron here. Um, next, where we have is uh, for the water bills at Ledger um, Judge Crandall Field. Um, I've looked into some things. I actually talked to the finance director, and she said if we approve it, we could pay the last bill. They're um, in rough shape without having a season. 
And then with the drought on top of it, um, the water, you know, the irrigation system we're running, it runs when it doesn't rain because it didn't rain. It ran more often than it normally would. On top of that, baseball typically pays the spring half and then football pays the, you know, the fall half. But because baseball didn't use it in the spring, football played for the entire year without any revenue coming in because they didn't have a season. Um, all their fundraising was cut short because of COVID. They really only, I think they had a golf tournament that they just had a few weeks ago. And they're also trying to buy new uniforms. Um, my understanding is they're going to possibly have a huge increase in fees. Um, so I'm proposing we might be able to help them out and pay the last water bill, um, which I believe is like, I've got to get the exact number from them, like $1,800 um, for the, the back half. Um, and then I don't know if maybe you want to help with uniforms or something out of capital. I'm not sure if that's, I know we do soccer goals and equipment like that. So I don't know how we feel about, you know, like uniforms specifically or helmets. So that's kind of on the lead half, but, um, the water bill, I feel like we can definitely cover because without the lights going on and all the paint and stuff, the money we would have typically spent to support the youth league wasn't spent. So it could in turn be spent on the water bill instead. Um, actually will prevent the league from hiking the prices up pretty drastically next year for the kids. You keep it at an affordable rate as you know, it is a youth football league, not a day league team. And this would just be a you know one time pay this bill. Um Marsha said to make that you know very clear. Um I I would agree for the water bill. Um when it comes to, I think if it comes to giving them money to help them with uniform, you're going to open up a Pandora's box yeah. with all the other sports out there. Um, having multiple children in multiple sports, it, that would just be a can of worms. The water bill, I would agree with. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think you're right with not having the lights and stuff like that because they didn't play it, you know you have the budget i i think the water bill would be something that would greatly help them out and you know if we can do that i think that would be yeah and in turn he said they basically said if we can i kind of threw that out there they were just more complaining about the water bill um but they were essentially going to have to use the money they'd fundraise for new uniforms to pay the water bill. So, you know, and, and in the end, it would come back on us because I believe the bill's under our name. So if they don't pay it, we, we have to pay it anyways because um, it is under our name and our property. Um, but I mean, we, but I think they turned the lights on two times. That's the cost of the water bill right there. Um, they didn't have a season, so we can definitely afford it and all that. A huge savings this year. And at least that helps them out a little bit and they're not as far behind next year. I don't have any issue with it. I think that's, uh, you know, our land and, you know, just like the soccer fields and the baseball fields, we take care of them. So I think this is with falls in that realm. And we might have, I mean, we were definitely running it because we were doing work taking advantage of COVID, so I mean, it's kind of not fair to them that I'm, you know, we control the water being on or not, not them. If it was their choice, they'd probably turn it off, but then the field would die, um, which we don't want to happen because we've invested too much money in the field itself on our end as well. Anyone else have any concerns or comments? I can't get a motion to approve to pay the water bill. Second. Second. Meredith. All in favor? All right. Excellent. All right. Next one um, is just the motion to approve our 2021 schedule. Um, Places listed as the senior center, but hopefully it will be held in the senior center sooner rather than later and not remotely. Um, but 
We are almost at 2021, so that time to choose the next schedule. I don't know if anybody looked at it. I don't believe we have any holidays. We're going to look through double check everything. So looks like we should be all set with um, the second Tuesdays for all the next, next year if that works for everybody. So. It's fine to me. Mm -hmm. Get a motion. Motion. Motion to approve. All, right. All, All right. We're just buzzing through here. All right. Now, the next one is security at Christie Hill Field. Uh, we've already ordered signs. I don't know if it, you guys have been able to read through the email I attached. Um, I had a meeting with the mayor, the chief of police, and then Kevin Davis as well. There's been ongoing issues going on at Christie Hill. With um, It's a very secluded park and dark at night. It's been kind of a magnet for uh, unwanted activities there. Um, the chief has a lot of stuff that's happening at night. Actually, me and Russell came up with a short-term solution. He's going to install one of the gates we have um, at Clarkson Purdy Field. One of the mo I think someone backed into it and it just never got fixed. And there's no need to close that field up. The parking, the little parking lot area, because you know, it's you know surrounded by eight foot fencing. Um, so he's actually going to take that gate and we're going to move it. Our plan is to move it there. There's a pole already existing there. Uh, we talked with the water department. Um, and we're thinking actually maybe not even locking it, but if we shut the gate and dummy lock it um, with a sign that says park closed at dusk for at least, you know, a couple of weeks, that we might deter some of the activity that's currently going on there. Um, in addition, we're thinking about possibly, you know, clearing some of the brush out, uh, removing some trees so there's, you know, additional line of sight into the park. Um, and then there's also possible, like, capital improvement options. There's no lighting there. Um, but there's also no power. Um, we are installing some of those solar powered lights at the town green. So I'm interested to see how that works out there. And if we thin some of the trees out, it'll also allow the sight line in. There might be enough lighting there to power a solar powered light in the parking lot. So at least that'll be a deterrent for some of those, you know, activities that we're having on. These issues have been going on for many, many yeah. years. I remember my youngest and I didn't like going there during the day, let mm -hmm. alone, I would never go there at night, ever. I, I know Little League also came to us, I think two or three meetings ago and they wanted to update the field there. So I was almost wondering if we, you know, increase the league activity there, that might deter some of the you know, activities going on. So also the issues parking. Um, and then the brush, you know, creates a site issue. So we were thinking one of the ideas we kind of threw around is even clearing the brush. And one thing I thought of maybe even doing kind of the parking lot over and expanding it, maybe even to the other side, um, you know, a simple, easy, cheaper solution to do the millings. Um, we could have public works do it. Um, you know, just a few things we could do out of its capital improvement, like lights, um, you know, taking down some trees. Um, could go a long way there. And then with Little League investing money into the field, it might, you know, bring that park around and stop some of the things going on there if it's getting more used for, you know, organized activities. Now with lights, um, my question with lights is the neighbors that are right there. I know the neighbors are the ones, you know, they, obviously they're new neighbors mm -hmm. um, or newer. <laughs> uh, how would we do the lights to where it wouldn't be intrusive to, you know, we would have to keep, I, I know they want it, but then there's some, I'm just trying to be the devil's advocate here, and, you know, because those would be the, that would be the next question. Why'd you put this big light up to shine, shines in my bedroom window? You know what I mean? Those are things that we'd have to also keep in mind. Um, I'm all for it because it's always been kind of a place for not such great things. 
to go on there, especially after dark. Yeah. Um, I think the lights could be angled inward, and we're not talking about putting in like stadium lighting that's going to like light up the whole neighborhood all night, but just increase a little bit of light to help with, um, you know, it, just some visibility. But I think if it's angled inwards and if it's, you know, m muted enough, they're solar powered, uh, you know, it's not like it would be bright LEDs or anything like that. Yeah, I was thinking too, not like at the you know the roadside because uh we're thinking there's like a tree uh, kind of a line of trees in between the parking lot and um the park itself if we thin that tree line out and essentially put the light there you know at the edge of the parking lot and going in the park it would essentially shine one side into the parking lot and then the other kind of towards the park um just kind of increases visibility i know the police are doing more you know drives through there now trying to create a, you know increase their presence um, so it's definitely been ongoing issues there. Are there street lights in that area? I I forgot to look. I was down there today too, actually looking at. I had to send a picture of the fence to one of the companies. So um, might even maybe try and swing by on my way home and just see what it looks like in the dark. One of these nights, if not tonight. Um, now that it gets dark at four thirty, I can on my way home. So I wonder if you should. Um, scope out uh, the field and see where you would want to place lights so that because now there's hardly any leaves, so you can actually see the houses. Mm -hmm. You can see what angles to take to avoid that house. Yeah, without the trees. Yeah, we're not, we're not the stadium lights up, but yeah, you don't want to have even a small light could be annoying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing we have to really do tonight. I just figured to start Start the process. Something to think of as we get into, you know, parking lot capital improvement projects. And to, um, we're doing simple little fixes like signage and trying to put up a gate. Um, but I mean, it would probably be worth our time to put a little more interest in there and you know, spruce the park up a bit, especially if Little League's planning on investing money in that field as well. I say if we're actually going to be using the park more and little league is willing to invest in it um it, it is definitely something to put on i feel you know capital improvement because it, it is a nice little area um but it has always been for the past 15 years 20 years kind of a hole in the wall, bug infested, you know, I mean, it, it was one of those things where it was like, oh, we're playing at this field. We're like, you know, as parents, cause you, you sit there and you get eat up by bugs and, you know, so it, if we're going to use it more and little league wants to put money into it, then I say we, we look at these things, but if it's not going to be used that often, you know, simpler, yeah, some simpler, yeah, simpler solutions. And the lights, I actually don't think are really expensive. I want to say it's like, I think one of the solar lights is a thousand, two thousand dollars. That could be used for multiple lights. Plus, they got fancy with you know, car blocks and stuff. But if we position it right, we wouldn't even need on the other day from knocking the post over because it's in a parking lot at the town green. Um, I'm interested to see what it looks like when those are done. We'll have a better idea too what the lighting, you know, projection is going to be. And then, you know, the, the cost and install as well. Because public works can probably do a lot of the work too, which would be a huge cost saving just be getting the supplies. So, so, so. so I'm looking at the map that you attached and the. Um, the uh, the trees you're looking to trim or cut back are they on the south west corner of it or they cut directly across in between the parking lot and the park itself. It might okay. be hard to see on the map. Um, is, is the parking lot where the row of looks like rocks? Looks like there's a row of rocks. Yep. Yeah. So it's okay. basically, it looks like a big tree there. There's just a 
few of them there that we'd take probably take down. And there's rocks there actually. I looked because I was thinking that we might have to put up a fence, but we already do have the rocks position there, so a car can't get on the field even if the trees were to be taken down. Okay. We're not talking, you know, thin the woods, the woods out. It would be that that little center section. Yeah. And a small number of trees. Yeah. I mean, even even if more of the woods were like cut back, there's more like like hedging solutions that could keep site, mm -hmm. you know, sightings yeah, could... from the neighbors, but. Yeah, on the right side, they were thinking, I think the idea is maybe to get public works in to cut with the brush mower that right side back because that's an issue too. It's kind of overgrown and it's harder to see, you know, see in there. Plus, there's also the water uh, treatment station right there too. So, all the security, there's a lot of security concerns there with that as well. I don't, I don't think we have to motion or do anything on this tonight, but I feel like I figured I'd bring it up. I'm going to start thinking about it. I'm going to look into a few things that way. We may have some numbers to the budget time and see if it's something we want to progress with and see what public work can do as well. Um, anybody have any other questions or want to move on for now? We can table this for future. Move on. Right. Um, next thing is holiday events with COVID. I don't know. We're thinking it's probably not the smartest idea to do the light parade. Um, so we might have to get creative with this. I don't know if you guys have any ideas. We're open to pretty much anything at this point. I know some of the towns are recording the light parade and then just putting it out, but we don't feel we'll get a lot of interest that way with people to actually do floats and they are still they are still doing the jeep parade um i know the light parade's a little bit more intense than just you know decorating the jeep but what about trying to do the parade and say maybe we could stage like we could say, you know, preferably, you know, we stage them at the high school. Mm. And, and have people drive through? Every other parking spot, you know, and then they can pull out of there and kind of come up, come up. And then pull in, pull in there at a, in front of Ledger Center, pull in there, go down by the barn, and then exit back. Out. I mean, I wouldn't suggest a bonfire or hot chocolate or any of that stuff, but just something that. You know, and I, I don't even know if we want to do like the teachers did. Take if find a little route, and say, mm -hmm. okay, you know, we're gonna drive down these roads on this day or something. I I don't know. I I just a thought. Yeah, I know Monica was saying she's kind of leaning against the parade, seeing as well looking at the calendar, it would typically be like two weeks from now. It's kind of hard to throw that together. So I know she's asking for other ideas, like she's going out and need to dress up in Santa Claus and the kids drive by and take pictures like we did with the Easter Bunny. Um, you know, we're, we might have to get creative with this. I mean, we've come up with a few good ideas so far. Hopefully we'll have another one. Um, if you do want to do something like that, we do have the sled. We have the sleigh. Um, and you know, um, we have, I have two elf outfits, uh, costumes. Uh, so we can always use that, you know, we'd have to put it on a flatbed and have it 
Sounds like Loretta's going to do it. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, I, I can offer it from the fair. We we got the sled. Well, yeah, I'll have to think anything, unless you guys have any ideas. I mean, I can, me and Mana can friend to certainly brainstorm. We'll be come up with something to at least offer some for the holiday activity. It's COVID safe. All right. So, um, if anyone thinks of anything else, definitely contact uh, Scott. Uh, how about, uh, what about the holiday like scavenger hunt, like town, like through the town? Even like maybe the maybe the um, different trails in town, something like that. I don't know. I can bring that up and do a marketing together. Anybody else have anything? I'll, uh, I'll brainstorm with Monica. She's the more creative one. Yeah. Scott, depending, I mean, if you end up with a definite date for a parade, I have um, <laughs> I have direct access to a Santa. So as long as it doesn't conflict with his other um, duties, my dad spends most of his holiday season playing Santa. So. It's an option. It, he's free booked up, but if it's something, you know, he loves helping out. So. Yeah, certainly. All right. Um, our next item, actually, I have some good news because I did. I met with the mayor this morning and then actually talked to him again this afternoon. We don't need to have a discussion about the community center. Um, they're looking into leasing a property for the food bank. So at this point, it looks like we're going to be able to maintain the community center and our parks and recreation. Well, that's a serious change from where we were a week ago. What? What? How did that transpire? Uh, I'm, I'm really not, I don't want to ask questions. It, it's working out in our favor. So it was a very hot topic. Yeah. It was a very hot topic, um, and. I know that the fire district in Gales Ferry, um, they did a lot of pushing against it um, due to the agreement when Parks and Recs took over the property. Plus, I know this weekend I was talking to some of the volunteers um, and pointed out the traffic congestion alone would be an absolute nightmare to have it at the community center. Um, and the, the big point I pointed out this weekend was the privacy. Mm -hmm. Like the way they do it now at um, the church, you drive in and you drive out nobody sees you you're you're in that kind of little nook of a thing um and having it at the community center i mean you're very visible you're you know you you pull in you have to pull in you have to back out it it would just be um and i know there was a huge discussion on it um plus i mean the Morgan barn is there. There's so many other options that, and that the church is still willing to, if they put the money into the food building there, the church is willing to let them use it. Yeah, my understanding they're gonna stay in the church. I think with COVID, they're allowed to use it. They're not really utilizing it, but they have a very prospective lease uh, option that I think they're pursuing. Now, is there's, that there's one thing I was a little bit confused about. The original letter that we received, Scott, that you forwarded to us, and apparently um, members of the Gales Ferry District board received as well, stated that this was happening. We have made the decision to relocate the food pantry to the community center, but based on the meeting with the land use commission, they hadn't even gotten the permission to 
move the jurisdiction of the community center at that point. So I'm kind of confused as to what order of events, like why everything felt very out of order. Yeah, um, I mean, that's why essentially when I found out, I wanted to send in a letter of, you know, to be attached to an agenda action item just to ensure that, you know, our voice was essentially heard. Um, and we're now going in a different direction. So just, you know, it helped benefited us in that way. Um, right questions were asked because I know it's a land use. They were asking some questions, you know, about alternatives and you know how what would be required of the community center. And stuff. I do have a question though. Um, this weekend, discussing it with one particular councilman um, and some of the volunteers that are pretty regular volunteers at the um Katie, food pantry. the um i couldn't answer the question but it was asked to me um i guess one of the the letter one of the letters the letter you sent out saying that you know the revenue that we that we get from that property um Somewhat, what the councilman made the comment that your numbers were not correct. That it was that actually we only make seven thousand dollars a year with that rental. It's about eleven. So that that was the fees collected. As, as I had in my letter, we had to get the info together very quickly, um, and I followed up. You know when. Next to me, Ken and Shane, I brought the with everything included the number of participants, the fees collected with the revenue split out of it. Uh, it was yeah. a lot of work for us to get all that information out for a specific location. The system doesn't yeah. like split that out for us, you know, specifically for the community center. I can get that information for everything, but you know, we actually had to go back in by hand and do hand calculations and math. The fees number was correct, but people were also misinterpreting that the fees were revenues. Yeah, because that's the fees taken in, and then after expenses, we get the revenues. Yeah, because he was asking me, and I told him I didn't have direct numbers that you know you would be the one to speak to, but that you know whatever you put in your letter, you know. I would tend to think that that would be the right amount, um, you know, because he was like, no, we did the math and it, it was only $7,000. And I was like, you need to call Scott. It's not something I can answer. So mm -hmm. I was just curious if anybody from the town reached out to you to ask you those questions. Um. I mean, one or two people did, and then I was okay. able to present, you know, information to like the mayor, and then Linda, and okay. then I explained some stuff too, like because yeah. there was a lot he of misinterpretation. He just asked me this weekend. He just asked me on Saturday. There's also a lot of changes that have occurred with the community center as well. Like for a portion, we might have made more in revenue because we weren't paying all the utility bills because the board of bed was in there paying certain utility bills, and we were paying a portion out of our permit fees. And then there was a changeover where we were taking over all the utility fees. So it, it depends on the year that you're looking at as well. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of factors that yeah. need to be explained correctly. Um, like I said, I just talked to black. I just talked to him on Saturday and he asked me these questions. So I was just, you know, I directed him to you and so I was just curious if he had actually reached out to you within the last couple of days. You know, so, but it's good that we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> I have all the numbers now, though, in case they're needed in the future. So, it's a lot of work that we put in. Uh, I have a question. I don't know if you have the have it the information on hand. But, um, what like is the community center used like at capacity right now, or is there like a lot of times where there's nobody's in there? When there's nobody in there. Well, for COVID, we're not utilizing it very much. Um, we're trying to use more 
the senior center space simply for cleaning purposes. We have a cook and a, you know who also cleans. That's his job on site. So every morning and during the day, he's able to clean that programming space for us to ensure it's clean. We do have stuff going on in there, like sea, uh, the Sea Scouts. Um, we have a Nature Nut class that's going on there. Um, we're also scaled back with a lot of our programs as well. But basically, we're using, uh, utilizing the Senior Center and the Community Center right now. We're trying to keep as many programs out of the school as possible in case, you know, any shutdown and it won't disrupt programs unless we're also shutting down as well. Um, during a typical time, though, it is utilized pretty regularly. Actually, our numbers didn't have a lot of groups included in it that, you know, we actually give that space to for free. Um, there's a lot of civic groups that utilize the space um, that we found out weren't even on my rec. John just wrote them on, him on a calendar, which we no longer had record of. Um, so I mean, that was a big factor, too. Those numbers were actually been understated. Um, and probably much higher as far as the usage is concerned. But uh, we have increased our usage drastically over the past couple of years, especially during basketball season um, and in the summer, because uh, during the summer, our only two indoor spaces after three o'clock is now we're lucky enough to have the senior center and then it was the community center because um, we're not allowed in the schools after 3 p.m. Um, and then also with the winter, um, once the basketball season starts, We've actually been utilizing that space. It pretty much is completely booked because we move as much stuff out of the gym that we can possibly put in the community center um, to open up gym space for the youth group because their numbers keep in growth, you know, increasing each year as basketball getting more and more popular. Um, so, I mean, over the years we have increased the usage and then the, the permit fees as well. Actually, last year was like the biggest percentage, I think, out of all our permits of the 60. 60% or something like that of our current fees being from the community center. So I have a follow up. Um, so, what kind of. Um, so, one of the things that came up out of this discussion of the food pantry was a lot of people were made aware that we have Morgan Barn that can be utilized for anything. So, like, if the town were to put the money into actually making the organ barn usable, would we be able to fill up the space? Like, would we be able to utilize it and keep it, um, you know, busy, I guess? Um, possibly. I mean, we've increased programming drastically. Monica's done a great job. Um, I mean, we're working on you know, the community center and this, now that we have the senior center, we've been able to expand. I mean, if we continue expanding, we might be able to utilize that space as well. Cause last year we just took over the senior center, which opened up all this additional space for us to run programs that we did not have before. Um, I mean, it could definitely be something down the line that would be a good option for expansion. Um, and you know, for the schools as well. Remind me again, the Morgan Barn is under our jurisdiction or is that the? It's, I believe it's, it's, we have jurisdiction of the property. I yeah. might be able to, I'm not sure. I think the fair has a certain amount of time to get everything out of there or. or We're out. Yep. We had, we had until September 1st. Mm -hmm. um, We're out of there. The building runs on propane for heat. When we left the building, um, there is an area where there could be a kitchen. Um, we had a, a flat top grill in there. We had fryers in there. It, it's got triple sinks, it could be a kitchen area. Um, you have the meeting or the area downstairs, which is a, a good size. There is a bathroom that is big enough to be wheelchair accessible, except there's no, so there'd have to be a holding tank put in somewhere. It has been brought to my attention that I was wrong about the bathroom because I did bring that up in my arguments. 
I did know they took the tanks out, but apparently ledge light came in and there was never an official bathroom put in on their books. So they, the town was told they had to remove it. So the public works did take the bathroom. Ledge, ledge light approved that building every year. Boat lighting. Yeah, but what we were told the other day was that an engineered septic would have to be put in to reestablish a bathroom, which is a substantial yes. investment. You would have to put in new holding tanks and run for any type of wastewater or, you know, um, but there are three smaller offices upstairs and there's also a meeting room upstairs. It's on a cement foundation. Um, it's very sturdy. I mean, we had, there was more stuff in that building than I even knew we had when we moved it all out. Um, there, um, if they were to put in some type of, you know, septic holding tanks or whatever, like I said, there is a bathroom that would be big enough for wheelchair accessibility. Um, it is a very sturdy building, like I said. Three offices upstairs, two meeting rooms, a kitchen. So it, it is, and it has the, um, like I said, the propane heat, the heat's like these big, it's like, like the square. Yeah, like an industrial, like you would see in a, um, like a shop or something. You know, they're the industrial heaters that hang from the wall. So I did get an opportunity to look inside. My concerns as far as like program, it'd be a great meeting spot, but I had programming. I was kind of concerned there's load bearing beams you know, in through various parts of the big room. So it's not like one open room, like the community center is just an open room. Like, so right. if you're doing an exercise, you're not going to hit anything. But in the Morgan Barn, there's beams, which we would just have to see if those could be taken out or not. Um, and that would be, you know, if they could, it could be a space that could be utilized. For but it could also be utilized for scouts or... Mm -hmm. The Sea Scouts and the other groups that utilize yeah. the center as well. Sea Scouts or, you know, if they're doing some kind of knitting or... I don't know. <laughs> but it, it is a very sturdy building. It does get... I mean, it does get cold, but it doesn't burn that much. I want to say we would fill up we would fill up the propane tanks once a year and that that was to that we used it through the fair weekend well the two weeks you know um and then we would keep the heat on all winter and i'm not sure what size the tanks were but we would fill both of them up once a year so. Okay. Good discussion. Uh, <laughs> that's not like under, and it's under our jurisdiction, but we're not planning on using that at any time soon. Um, not, not in the immediate future. It would definitely need a lot of work. I mean, we have the capital account and the capabilities to get the building where it needs to be. Um, but it may be something to look into to make sure. You know, we're going to be able to utilize it for investing. Yeah. Yeah, I think like, we get a list of things like priority. That. Sorry, Ken. Well, as I say, the community center, we got to max it out before we start using yeah. it. Them. But in the meantime, you can make the list of things you need to, to change in that building if you want to use it. Mm -hmm. well, remember, when we... there's there's a tremendous amount on our capital improvement list that we we continue to defer. So it would just have to get back in there and evaluate it against everything else. But I agree, Ken, until we start maxing out the community center, I, I, we can add it to the list, but it certainly wouldn't make my list of priorities given everything else we've got there. 
So the steep ramp that was approved, um, I don't remember what kind of, um, you know, we had that plan that we approved and with the ramp. Um, I don't remember how much, I, I remember there being like a huge wish list with like a lot of like nice to haves. I don't remember how much money all of those things came out to be. So like, do we have an idea of how much that steep grant is actually going to cover? Yeah, I have this, that's like unofficially, but at the bottom of my list. So I think the, the big wish list you guys saw with all the pretty things like the splash pad and the new playground, we got that number back and it was a lot of money. We're talking like million dollars. And then we found out that the steep grant, we could only get like a hundred and something thousand with a match. So I think we put in for 188,000 steep covers. So we got $128,154 for the steep grant. So they essentially took that plan and broke it into two phases. So I believe what they're doing with the money that they have is um, I think they're going to pave the parking lot. Um, they're painted lines. Um, they're going to put in a dumpster pad um, for the pole barn. And actually, this benefits us because it was something that would come out of the capital improvement project. They're going to put on new metal roofs for both the pole barn, which we're now utilizing, especially with COVID, and then the Holdridge Pavilion. Which the whole is something on our our capital improvement list for the you know the future for the roof we do. Um, it's also including some new lighting for the pole barn, and we just did you know the work at the whole group design with our capital electrical uh, work up there, and then splitting all the electric bills so we're no longer on the church. Um, they're also with the steep grant going to get a gazebo, um, picnic tables, benches. They're going to put in wooden guardrails. So they're creating essentially a little pocket park, which will be good for us down in that bottom right hand corner um, where all like the trailers and stuff are at right now. So that'll be a good little, you know, draw for permits, um, weddings, and things like that. That should greatly benefit the parks and rec department. Um, they're going to plant a Christmas tree on the property. No more cutting one down and putting it in the giant. Uh, manhole covered hole that we have up there currently. Um, and then I think there's, you know, other parking lot stuff. Actually, that looks like our, our match, which they're already doing that, as new lights and stuff like that, which is part like from the school uh, sale and then a little bit of what we have for our capital project left over for the electrical work up there. So it's not the huge, big plan that. You know, we originally thought they had to break it up because when we got the number, I don't know if it's happening yet, but it was a million or pretty close to like a million dollars um, to do everything that was on that map that we originally saw. But I know Public Works has to start doing some stuff immediately, so I think they're doing something simple like you know, as part of what they're doing, they're gonna spend some of the money on the lighting they're already putting in. That way they meet the grant requirements. Um, and then I think we have the course of two or three years to complete the work. So we'll slowly see that unfold um, pretty soon once we get, you know, the award. Okay. That was a big meeting filled with stuff. <laughs> uh, appreciate everyone sticking around. It was definitely, um, more packed than we normally have it. Um, it's got nice work. You know, it takes a lot to get this all organized. Um, so I guess uh, let's have a motion to uh, adjourn. Second. All right. All in favor. Well, good evening, guys. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night.